This is a soul for your production. <laughs> In 2005, Rolling Stone magazine published an article about the world-renowned phenomenon that was Bob Marley. It was written by Mikhail Gilmore. In his article, a great deal of detail was paid. However, what is most striking is the beginning. For a man who already knew he was dying from a malignant melanoma, I would be short-sighted in not noting that this epitomizes the fighting spirit that a man of legend would have in his final days. He writes, Marley didn't want to learn that death might be growing inside him. Instead, he concentrated on doing what made life most meaningful to him, making music that might improve the world that he would leave behind. For a man who spoke many things, the poison which he dealt with a polarizing political landscape can be cited listing a very slim few throughout history, including perhaps Mahatma Gandhi. To have the conscious absolution of peace against war and still speak of revolution, and repeatedly phrasing militant in a well-mannered philosophical manner, he set the bar for his worldwide appeal, but certainly not without the pressure of the outside world's attention. It's a feel, you know? It has been the most impactful education of my life to focus on those with whom suffer great turmoil and triumph within what can only be said as a short life. And especially in regard to the legend Bob Marley, he certainly was cut short. Passing at the age of 36, he still mightily fought a mind-staggering eight months after having been given a 10-week life expectancy following a doctor visit, but inevitably met his end in Miami on May 11, 1981. McCall Gilmore writes, Marley's message of resistance, of spirit as a means to defeat oppression and claim one's inherent rights, has clearly emerged as his most powerful and important legacy. It's true that many others in popular music have spoken to these same concerns, including Bob Dylan, John Lennon, Marvin Gaye, Bruce Springsteen, and Tupac Shakur. Some people still searching for this truth here, which this reggae music, you know, bring cries to them, and the only purpose it serves is to tell the people in Rasta. Marley risked his life to say the things he believed, and as a result, both his art and his example managed to uplift or embolden others, particularly members of the African diaspora, in cultures and conditions that no other Western pop star has entered with such authenticity. Given the nature of the world, timing, and the cyclical nature of it all, I believe it is in our best interest to pay attention to the lessons of the past, and in so doing, find hope that in it all, there will always be the militant few who surge through the gates with least resistance in order to uphold the strength found in peace, love, and unity. It's the people who make it out now, it's about a few. Majority of the people from the hurt want it. And it's just a few because guns. In any man's endeavor, there will undoubtedly become a next generation of the same. And in many circumstances, such as this, a more plentiful and abundant one at that. Although Bob Marley was cut short on his life, that does not discount the legacy that would unfold having become a father to 11 children. Among them, we have been gifted many blessings by way of an outpouring of his gift to the world in forms of music, art, culture, and wisdom. And as the roots of reggae music spread in influence, and the New Age music revolution began to surge, Bob Marley's offspring had inherited more from the merit of their fearlessly spirited fathers as any kin could ever dream, an ample reputation to sustain. In prisons and bad life treat you bad, so people kinda... But we want some people power, and the only people power is Rastafari.